What's up guys, Cruise VR here. Today I'm bringing you guys episode number six of Quantum Break. So yeah. Shit's starting to get intense, guys. Security was tight at the Monarch Gala. You took quite a risk walking into the lion's den. If we were gonna kidnap Dr. Amaral, then we needed to do it from the inside. Beth Wilder. You were quick to trust her. We had common interests. Is that all you had? That's all we needed. Well, I'm starting to think seeing a pretty lady like you is too much to hope for. Why don't you keep your mouth shut while we get some privacy before we begin? Okay. How about you get me out of this chair? Ah, ah, ah. Stop squirming. And you're gonna need this. I appreciate it. Sure. What's it look like out there? I think you're secure. Everyone's concentrating on the party. So far, your crazy plan's working. And Dr. Emerald? I don't have a fix on her. She's either at the party or at her office at the R&D facility here on the island. I'll scout out the party. So you're gonna sip champagne while I break into a high security installation? It's like you got this all figured out. I'll save you a cocktail, Weenie. Oh, well, in that case... My cover isn't gonna survive the night, but it'll last a little longer, so you can't walk out the front door with me. This is the quickest way to the R&D facility. I disabled the security at the back door, but there'll be guards. Contact me when you're clear. And Jack, you know what's at stake here. This can't be about revenge. I'm not here for Paul. That will hurt in the morning. Sorry about that guy. My, My powers were growing. I was learning to control them better. That felt good. Who the hell designs these doors? Okay, we have to move fast. We get through. Hey, Beth. I'm clear. What's next? Oh, he could have warned me about that one, Beth. Okay, how am I getting to that radar tower? I 
I need to get across somehow. Must be a way across. Off turned into a disaster. It's gonna take him weeks to clean it up. It was also put. Thank God. Monarch built over World War II fortifications. Maybe wonder why they chose that island. The existing tunnel system led back to the <clears throat> mainland. Perfect for construction of a highly secretive R&D facility. Time felt broken here. The coastal defense installation of Riverport was commissioned on August 2nd, 1940, the whole and completed in September 1942, in as America faced the realities of World War II. In addition to the fortifications and artillery, it also boasted an extensive tunnel system that linked the Gull Island to the mainland, enabling a free movement of personnel and material even under siege conditions. It was built in preparation for an attack on the United States that fortunately never came. The original plan also called for the construction of a large naval base in Riverport to support the U.S. Navy in the Atlantic, taking advantage of the local ship and building industry. But as the United States entered World War II after Pearl Harbor, a change in res resourcing priorities led to those plans being scrapped. This installation was in active use throughout the war, and the underground facilities continued to be used as a base for the Navy intelligence work once World War II ended. The installation was decommissioned in 1961. The timeline of the old cannon felt loose. I could shift it around. Smart place to aim the cannon, guys. <laughs> okay, I need the cannon to get over. Okay, quicker next time. say these stutters are getting more frequent. One hits while we're grabbing Dr. Amaral. You'll be frozen. Yeah, I know. It's a risk. One of our specialist troopers have the stutterproof gear. I bet Dr. Amaral will have that around us too.
Thanks, Beth. I need to get to the radar tower. Beth? I'm at the radar tower. Where's the lab? Below your feet. It's all top secret. The elevator inside will take you down. Oh, seriously? What is this, a Bond villain layer? You have no idea. Just don't fall into the shark tank. Hey, Beth? I'm headed down into the labs. Okay. A bit of confusion here at the party. Serene's right hand man's on stage. It was supposed to be Serene. Yeah. I think Paul was too busy trying to have a heart to heart with me to make it. It was some kind of surveillance drone. Knowing that Monarch had eyes in the sky made me a little uneasy. I strain my powers. We refer to it as a chronon damp. When Paul visited me in that cell, he said time was a closed loop. Believed the fracture couldn't be fixed. Seeing the scale of that facility it made me wonder. Time to run it. What was it all for? Shit. 
Yeah, with the uh, part known as Dark Hollow boards. The second time I've died. I didn't die at all last episode. Where did it to watch this goddamn cutscene one more time.
Once I figured out how to actually beat it, it was pretty cool. Oh, hello. I'm guessing this isn't the usual employee route. Nobody here knows about the mess I made on the way in. Nice job, Beth. Okay. People, it appears we have been overtaken by events and we have to, had to adjust our plans accordingly. As you are no doubt aware, we, are, we now have Jack Joyce in our custody. He gave himself up earlier today. As Mr. Serene has a personal interest in Joyce and the information he might have, he will be interrogating him at the detention center on the island. Unfortunately, this means that Mr. Serene cannot be there for the speech he was scheduled to give at the gala tonight. So I will have to stand in for him. I have some new security requirements pertaining to that but I will discuss those with specific individuals in person. Furthermore, be aware that in addition to Joyce, we also have Liam Burke held at the detention center. Despite his long service to Monarch, Burke is now to be considered hostile and has already done quite a bit of damage to us. I shouldn't have, have to say this, but just be, to be absolutely clear, any orders given by him should be ignored. Please ensure that Joyce is ready for Mr. Serene. Also, please bear in mind that Joyce is cruel and active and extremely dangerous. He has given himself up voluntarily, so it's entirely possible he doesn't intend to cause trouble. But let's make sure he, we're prepared if he does. We don't know if his motivations, and I would not put it past him to use his surrender as a means to exact a hidden agenda. Martin Hatch. read this poster real quick. Paul Serene has become preoccupied with his appearance, with the appearance of Jack Joyce. He has put aside engagements in tonight's gala in order to focus on some feeble attempt to convert Jack to our cause. This distraction presents us with the perfect opportunity to push our agenda. Tonight we send Monarch into a state of chaos. Tonight we ensure Paul Serene's downfall. I have managed to convince Paul to allow me to deliver the gala speech on his behalf, creating the perfect cover. Steps are as follows. Gallo shooting, gallo shooting. 
I will be delivering Paul's speech at the gala very soon. I have arranged for an inside resource to fire shots in my direction from a vantage point halfway through the speech, narrowly missing me on stage. This will throw the gala into pandemonium and this destabilize Monarch to a point where Paul's authority and control of the situation will be called into question. More immediately, it will force Monarch to initiate security measures that will lead to Sophia Amaral being locked into the nearby Monarch Villa for her protection. Drone sabotage. Stetson will recalibrate Drone A7's flight pattern and cause it to crash directly into the villa, killing Sophia Amaral and therefore removing Paul Serene's only means of developing the treatments necessary for his sickness. Treatment lab demolition. In the aftermath of Amaral's death, I will head the investigation that will allow me to gain access to Dr. Kim's lab, where the entirety of Paul's treatments are kept. Demolition charges will be planted and every single treatment will be destroyed with no further treatments forthcoming, Paul will be rendered helpless. With the stutters happening more and more often, I predict that Paul's sickness will take hold within six hours of these events. Only then will we make our final move. Oh, this is a lot of reading. Holy shit. I think I already read this. I think this is the email. Yeah. Wait, hold on. That's Emma's office. It's no exaggeration to say that Cronin Field Regulator or the CFR is at the heart of all of Monarch's techno technological advances. It has taken on a somewhat mythical quality given its origins and the vital role it plays on the lifeboat protocol. But in pr actuality, the CFR's applications are very practical. That's not to say that the CFR hasn't had a course of altering impact on the work Monarch Solutions does. It's been hugely influential in the development of both the stutter-proofing technology that allows us to shield area, large areas from the effects of a zero state, enabling time to keep flowing within them even as it stops else, so everyone else as well as the smaller personalized application of the same technology, the portable Cronin Hardis harness that allow our soldiers and technicians to operate freely within stutters. We think of Dr. Henry Kim as the father of all this technology and deservedly so, but for all of his brilliance it was his dedication to uncovering the secrets of the CFR that allowed him to make his breakthroughs. Despite Dr. Kim's hard work, the CFR's functionality is still not fully understood and we have not been able to replicate the device. Having more than one of them would, be, uh, would obviously be greatly advantageous to us. But we find ourselves in a precarious position where in order to fully investigate it, we would have to take it apart. Given its immense power, such an undertaking would pose obvious risks. Perhaps even more importantly, there is no guarantee that we would be able to put it back together again. Given that it's vital to the implementation of the lifeboat protocol, it's our policy to leave it intact. We do now know, however, that the CFR can not only store an immense amount of Cronin particles, it can also tap into Meyer Joyce, the Meyer Joyce field and with great precision manipulate it. It's the unique ability that our own Cronin field, or Cronin technology re replicates, albeit at far less control and efficiency. It's also what makes the lifeboat protocol a reality. By itself, as our stutter proofing technology is powerful and reliable, but its rate of Cronin particles consumption, particle consumption is high and it increases in a, at an alarming rate as we widen the volume of space the stutter-proofing covers. This world on the face of it make the stutter-proofing a very temporary solution indeed, one that could perhaps buy us some subjective weeks once we enter a permanent zero state, but which we would ultimately only delay the inevitable. However, the CFR changes all of that when the permanent stutter-proofing installed on that lifeboat on the lifeboat, indeed the very stutter proofing that makes the lifeboat the lifeboat in the first place is directed by the CFR, the system becomes vastly more efficient. Our Cronin particle consumption is reduced to around 1% of what it otherwise would be. Given that Cronin particles are hard to source even at our ground zero installation and our stockpiles are decidedly limited, this means that the CFR makes the difference between the lifeboat being a temporary stopgap solution or very long-term undertaking hope that hopefully allows us to eventually find a solution to the end of time <sighs> if I have to read one more freaking thing
Oh my god. This episode is a lot of reading. I'm sorry, guys. Slide one. Which of what? Much of what we know about the shifters is theoretical, based on observations made by Dr. Mr. Serene and the limited experimentation we have been able to conduct on the only subject we have managed to capture. They do not seem to have a stable physical presence. Rather, the data we are gathering appears to be fragmented and contradictory, as if there were countless versions of the subject occupying the same space. Our current theory is that there's, they somehow exist in a persistent state of quantum superposition. Or to put it another way, the reference to the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. The cat is both alive and dead at the same time. The full mechanics and impl implications of this exceed our current understanding, but on a practical level, it seems to make them highly resistant to injury. It appears that if the shifter encounters deadly force, it may kill one of its aspects, but because it exists as multiple iterations of itself, including iterations that were not killed by the force, it doesn't stop. Current theory suggests that the only way we stop to stop a shifter is to cause its wave function to collapse from the superposition into a single eigenstate. In pr practical terms, the shifter must be affected with deadly force enough t times to, for it to run out of health itself. As such, direct confrontation with a shifter would be a last resort. Slide 2. Contact with a shifter is extremely dangerous. We know that they are essentially mobile re 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 repositories sorry, I couldn't grammar there, of vast amounts of Cronin particles and that they can only exist in zero state. An area which has been depleted of Cronin particles, typically by a fault in the Meyer-Joyce field that encompasses the universe. Colloquially, we refer to these as stutters in time. We, are, we also know that shifters are hostile to any source of Cronin particles other than themselves within stutters, so many Cronin active individuals within a stutter may find himself, themselves targeted by shifters. It appears that moment, movement in stutters, by which we mean the very movement of particles within space in which time flows, not merely the movement of an individual disturbs them and they respond with considerable aggression. <sighs> As discussed previously, shifters are extremely resistant to damage. They are also quite physically formidable, but their biggest threat is the distortion field around them. Its exact nature is an unknown, but we know it warps the properties of the space surrounding them, exerting great physical stress and unpredictable forces on its surroundings. Again, in practical terms, close proximity to a shifter may be fatal, even if no actual physical contact takes place. Slide 3. The stutter-proofing technology Monarch Solutions has advanced offers solid protection against shifters. Time flows normally within a stutter-proofed area, so shifters simply cannot exist within them. Therefore, as long as stutter-proofing remains active, shifters are not a problem. However, stutter-proofing of large air outside areas is not feasible, given our Cronin particle budget. So we have de developed our other technology to defend against shifters, the Cronin dampeners. A Cronin dampener works by annihilating free-floating Cronin particles within a spe specified area. As shifters form, our forms are hyper-saturated with Cronin particles. They cannot enter an area in which a Cronin damp dampener is active without their wave function and collapsing. Therefore, our operatives in the field have a solid part of portable defense against shifters. Our own technology is shielded against the dampener's effects, so activities and stutters undertaken by our strikers and other operatives are not hindered. However, as an unfortunate side effect, the dampeners have a crippling, side of, a crippling effect on individuals who are prone and active without the aid of technology. According, accordingly, should Mr. Serene be present, you should always make him aware of your intentions before activating a dampener. You may rest assured, you may rest assured that the dampener is not powerful enough to do actual physical harm to Mr. Serene, whose system constantly produces new Cronin particles to replace the ones that are lost. But as the dampener's effects are unpleasant and enervating, such an encounter is likely to lead to an awkward conversation about future career prospects. Good, okay. That's the end of that one. That there looks like what Beth wanted. Oh, shit. 
Emeralds at the park. Shit. Better won't last. I better find oh, a way out God, here and get in the park. Okay, this isn't too much. We've looked at the preliminary data on the frequency and severity of the stutters and crunched the numbers, and the results are alarming. Our original projection, which gave us years until the fracture reached the point where time breaks down completely, does not match up with the progression of stutters we are experiencing. Put simply, the stutters are happening more and more frequently, clearly indicating that the Meyer-Joyce field is breaking down much faster than we thought. We thought. Taking the rate of acceleration, we can hypothesize that we might have as little as 24 hours until we reach the end of time or the point at which its time stops and no longer starts up again. We do not know why the original projection was wrong and why that data, which we do consider reliable coming as it does from Mr. Serene, seems to entirely contradict our current findings. Regardless, the main issue seems clear. In order to achieve Monarch Solutions stated goals, the lifeboat protocol should be activated ASAP. Uh, more emails. Admiral had tried to warn Paul. The end of time was approaching quickly. Less than 24 hours away. Mr. Serene believed it would take years to run its course. Admittedly, he was wrong. <clears throat> Sophia, as promised in our late latest session, I am now going to transcribe what I recall from my dreams. I still have doubts that I that this exercise will help alleviate my symptoms but I'm willing to explore the idea further if you truly believe in its merit. For someone who is not a medical doctor, let alone a mental health professional, you seem to take a great interest in my thoughts, not that I don't appreciate it. Here's my first attempt. I recall a haunting image of seven red doors. Each door had a wrought iron handle that was dripping liquid metal onto the ground, creating a pool in the middle of the room. I looked down and into the aqueous metallic glow at my feet to see my own glimmering reflection, revealing that I had aged half a lifetime. Startled, I looked back up to discover that only one door remained. Jack Joyce stood in front of it. The heat in the room was overwhelming. Jack was sweating profusely, his skin red and peeling open. He begged me to take him back home, but there was no door leading home. I opened the door, the only door left, and entered, discovering that we were back in the same room we had just exited. He refused to come to terms with this and opened the door again. I followed him over and over as he desperately opened the doors, forever leading us back to where we started. The heat grew and he howled in pain, begging to know why I made the other doors disappear, why there was only one path. He begged me to bring the other doors back. He begged me to take him home. The iron pool burst into flames. Jack screamed in agony. I grabbed him, told him what, that we needed to learn to endure the heat, to embrace the flame. I knew it would come to pass eventually, but the only way to survive it was will, to accept its inevitability. My body began swaying, rapid, swaying rapidly, dancing to the movement of the flames around me until my bones faded out of existence, and I surrendered to the fire until we were one and the same. I was no longer one being in one place and time my life force spread evenly across the flames until I no longer I was no longer an individual in one body but a gander shifting entity I could feel Jack being consumed within my essence I felt a power within the heat a clarity of intent I forgot about my desire to to ever return from the flames because the body that once desired to return was lost forever I became the very thing that I entered and it became me, a, a cyclical fury chasing itself, Ouroboros. Ouroboros, I don't know what that means. I woke up in a cold sweat. I quickly wrote down words that poisoned my mind in that moment. Dunmore Schwartz was right. Time is the fire. With Jack Joyce in our custody, I thought it was relevant to forward uh, you a message you sent me years ago. Do not understand, underestimate the significance he holds in your life. I understand your concern that he is reluctant to accept the inevitability of what is coming. However, what he sees the, the whole picture, when he sees the whole picture, he'll have no choice but to believe. We all had our doubts once, once. You showed us the light. Give him some time.
quite expensive piece of tech you stole. Bill me. I knew Beth's cover wouldn't last long. Had to get it to her at the party before it was too late. Oh, well, I don't really care. I'll go back and get them after I beat the game. What am I? Like, okay. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, be down in the description below. As always, guys, it's been crazy VR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See ya.